تعالی سبحانک لا علم لنا الا ما علمت انا انک انت العلیم الحکیم وی اسٹارٹڈ وتھ دس ٹاپک اف سیڈیشن اینڈ پیرالیسز ان انٹینسو کے یونٹ اور ان اینی کریٹیکل کے یونٹ وی وینٹ تھرو دا ڈفرنٹ گروپس اف دا ڈرگس اینڈ دیئر ڈوزز ان دا لاسٹ لیکچر ناؤ I'll be talking about the technique and administration of sedative agents in critical care unit. Objective of this giving sedation to patient is that we should provide comfort to the patient. Patient should be comfortable. We don't give sedation to put the patient to sleep. And there should be balance between under sedation and over sedation. So we have to keep the balance. Now, if there is under sedation, the patient will not be comfortable. The whole objective will be gone. Patient might be in pain. So if you add a little bit sedation to the analgesic, so that will give more benefit to the patient. And patient will be hypertensive also. He will be responding to uh, obvious uh, pain as well as if the patient is not sedated, the other stimuli will increase the blood pressure and increase the heart rate. So that's not a good thing. Now, if there is a patient on the ventilator and if you are not sedated, the patient will not be cooperative with the ventilator. So there will be always asynchrony. They will be fighting with each other. So, so this will be the disadvantages of under sedation. If the patient is over sedated, patient can go into coma. Uh, you would not notice whether it is due to coma, due to disease or because of drug therapy. And it might ca cause respiratory depression also. Even it can cause apnea also. For example, if you are using benzodiazepines, so if you give in a high doses, they are neuromuscular blockers. So they will also cause bradycardia leading to hypoten hypotension, uh, gastrointestinal stasis, it will suppress the peristalsis of the gut and that will affect your nutrition, particularly when you are giving parental nutrition. It, they are immunosuppressive drugs and some of the drugs can take the person into renal failure also. So, so overall effect that we should have, neither we should have under sedation nor we should have over sedation. Now bolus doses, if you give bolus doses, it will have immediate effect. And you will have to administer frequently and alternate under and over sedation. This is not a good idea to give bolus sedation because when you give uh, intravenous bolus, immediately the blood level will go up, the patient will be sedated. Then when the level comes down, the patient will be again not sedated. So that's not the idea. Objective is the patient should be in the corridor of sedation all the time. And moreover, there will be uh, people involved to give intermittently boluses to the patient. So, so you cannot avoid the uh, human errors also. Now, if you are giving continuous infusion of the drugs, it's very convenient. Once you have started, it will go on. But you can end up giving large dose also if you are not careful about it. And it can also lead to the organ dysfunction also. It means you have to monitor the patient continuously. And it is more expensive than giving a bonus doses. And gradually tolerance develops, develops. and in a continuous uh, use of the drug, so requirement of the patient to have the same level of sedation that will increase. So that's one of the disadvantages of continuous infusion. In CDS over sedation, if you're not careful, and when any drug which you give continuously, you should know their half-life for how long they are going to stay in the body. But if you're giving over days, over so many days of sedation, then you should always keep that they will be accumulating in the body also. So that should be your clinical judgment as well as if you can have a biochemical report also. Now, accumulation can lead to development of metabolites in the body and some of the metabolites are nephrotoxic and hepatotoxic also. So, although we have got, the, it is a very convenient way of giving, although it's a very, uh, 
pharmacologically logical to have a, a sedative corridor of the drug, but at the same time there are some disadvantages also. Methods for during anxiolysis and sedation by the intravenous route. You can give manually syringe in hand data sheet provide guidance on the dose and speed of injection. Manually you can adjust as you can adjust in the burette or you can adjust in the uh, giving set. And if you're using infusion pumps, in infusion pumps you can use intermittent giving by the infusion pumps. It should be patient controlled sedation. You give initial bolus dose to the patient and it should be done by the anesthetist or intensivist and then patient can control it itself. So whenever they need they press the button and there is adjustment of calculated dose every time the patient presses the button. But it cannot over sedate himself. If the patient is sedated or the patient is going into a sleep they, he will not be able to press the button. So if the patient is conscious then he will be able to press the button. And if you are giving continuously bolus dosage should be followed by manually operated continuous infusion. And there are some TCIs targeted target controlled infu infusions also. You need to have a level that you to adjust on syringe pumps level of the drug which is required and it will keep that level and automatically it will increase or decrease the dose which is being given through the infusion pumps. That is called TCI, target controlled infusions. And these pumps are available, but there is no way, we, we are not, uh, at the moment we are not ready to use TCIs in our part of the country. In conclusion, I will say, ensure the patient is comfortable or not little use of drugs as far possible and there should be continuous monitoring of the patient then keep the record of the drug also uh, physically on the chart and continuous infusion is better than the bolus dose so, so on the technique I prefer to give continuous infusion as we give in our ICU also we are giving continuously on the syringe pumps now on monitoring, some people, there are so many scores, sedation scores. The most commonly used is the Ramsey sedation score. So they make a six levels, if awake level and a sleep level. Awake level is the patient is still anxious and agitated or restless or both. This is sedation score one. Now the patient cooperate and is oriented, that is two. The patient responds through commands only otherwise goes to sleep. So that is level 3. Level 4 is patient is sleeping but there is a brisk response to pain stimuli. Then level 5 is sluggish response. And level 6 is if you are not careful the patient is asleep it doesn't matter what sort of stimuli you are giving to the patient the patient will not respond. So this is 2 to 4 levels are the best levels. So if you take it very deep then the objective of sedation is gone. If the patient is still anxious and agitated then again the objective of sedation is gone. Now, practically we divide these patients who require the sedation into different groups. Group 1 is post-operative patients. The post-operative patients who come they have got analgesia, regional, continuous or patient controlled analgesia. Right? Then Analgesia plus sedation if the patient is on ventilator. So the best way of giving is you give morphine bolus plus 0.5 to 5 milligram of morphine per hour infusion. They should give continuous because morphine will have a sedative effect also. It will have, is a very strong analgesic. The best analgesic so I ever found up till now is the morphine, opioids. They are the best. It doesn't matter how many other uh, strong drugs has come. Then opiate, if you give fentanyl plus propofol infusion also. Fentanyl is a beautiful drug. It is 10 times more potent than morphine. Morphine is double potent than pethidine. And fentanyl is uh, uh, 10 times more potent from uh, morphine is alfentanyl. Then 10 times more uh, potent fentanyl is than alfentanyl. It's a rule of 10. 
then fentanyl is equal to remy fentanyl then the uh, sue fentanyl is 10 times more potent than the remy fentanyl well they are not available but we have got a fentanyl but not to everybody not in the only in the government hospital they can control it as they have got in uh, this uh, cardiac units so we have applied so many times but there is always a problem to get it so this is a beautiful drug fentanyl so for anesthesia for post op pain or for otherwise pain with patient is on ventilator now group 2 is multiple organ failure group patients all iv drugs for sedation are liver dependent one should be very careful looking at the liver function if the patient is hepatic failure one has to be very careful giving sedative agent morphine if you are not careful can cause renal failure also and it is also contraindicated in renal failure also because it's a, it will accumulate in the body and fentanyl is ideal for renal failure so it is 0.05 to 2 microgram per kilogram per minute Alfentanil, sorry, is ideal for the liver failure. And isoflurane is in relation to anesthetic agents. Nowadays, there are types of machines are available in Western countries in intensive care units. So you can give oxygen, air, and isoflurane with it. It is a beautiful sedative agent. And even if you want to put the patient to sleep, you can give, increase the concentration. That's under your control. But we don't have those machines over here yet. Nobody in any intensive care unit in Pakistan is using it. Now, ventilatory failure, third group, the patient comes with a ventilatory failure, so they need very less sedation. They are already in respiratory failure. Then, propofol can be given 1 to 3 milligram per kilogram per hour, or analgesics, if the patient is in pain, you can add up the analgesic with it, like any canes or morphine and other things can be added. But you should be very careful because already if the patient is hypercapity, patient is already sedated. So you don't have to give too much of sedation. Then group 4 is head injured patient. Resuscitate the brain. You have to keep an eye on the resuscitation of the brain. So, and you will have to look at the brain edema and you look at the perfusion of the brain also. And you limit the further insult. Because our objective is that oxy, required oxygen to the brain should be provided so that there should not be anaerobic metabolism in the brain. And secondly, perfusion of the brain should not be too much perfusion of the brain. It will cause brain edema also. So ideally, propofol infusion and barbiturate infusion, they are very good. Intravenous anesthetic agent, except ketamine. They all lower the CMR2, cerebral metabolic rate of oxygen utilization. They lower the intracranial pressure. They depress the myocardium also. That one should be very careful. And they also decrease the peripheral resistance. That will lead to hypotension also. So you have to keep an eye on these two things. But otherwise, they are beautiful drugs because they reduce the cerebral metabolic rate of oxygen utilization. So and subsequently, it will lower the intracranial pressure. Now, the, if the patient has got head injury and the patient is on a ventilator, it's, it's best thing is to give muscle relaxant that will lower the intrathoracic pressure, that will increase the venous drainage from the upper part of the body and from brain, and that will lower the intracranial pressure. That will be ideal to keep the patient relaxed. And if required, you can add the anotropes with it also to have adequate cerebral perfusion pressure. Because in a head injured patient, it is very important to have adequate cerebral perfusion pressure. What is cerebral perfusion pressure? It is the mean arterial pressure minus ICP, intracranial pressure. So, so, and you have to be very careful because they are patient at the verge of going into incompensation as far as the intracranial pressure is concerned. I have uh, uh, delivered three lectures on that. Uh, on the brain, on the intracranial pressure also. Acutely confused patients. Uh, and there are so many people who are already confused. Now, causative factors like endocrine disorders, metabolic disorders, 
hypoxia, hypercarbium, and infection. The patient who are admitted in ICU, if they have got this sort of problem, so you look for a causative factor. Why the patient is confused? You ask the question to yourself. And we should relieve the pain if they are in pain. You should empty the bladder. This is one of the causes of confusion and restlessness. And you should be very cautious about the sedatives if you are not clear about the causative factor. You find sight out of the causative factor, then you give the sedative agents. Tranquilizers can be used, and there's a difference between sedative agent and tranquilizer. Tranquilizers. So, if required, if the patient is too much confused and agitated, you might have to give intermittent positive pressure ventilation plus sedative agents also. It depends what is the causative factor. You should always try to find the causative factor, then jump on the management. Sixth group is the patient on for procedures, like patient going to have bronchoscopy. Now, we usually give bronchoscopy, I usually inject transtracheal injection of local anesthetic and through the nose you drip the local anesthetic there and you put two swabs of local anesthetic on each side of the piriform fossa so that will numb the whole respiratory pathway and if the patient is agitated you on top of that you can give sedative agent for example midazolam and they're very quiet very cooperative and if you're going to put the chest strain in an in addition to giving intercostal block so, if the patient is anxious, you can give a little bit of sedative agent also. And vasomotor monitoring, like uh, you want to put the central line, arterial line, CVP line. So, so it's better to give them a little bit of sedatives or very low dose of opiates. Or if the patient is already having some other drug, then you can give propofol infusion on a very low dose. And Isofluorine, if you've got a provision of giving isofluorine, depending on the condition of the patient, depending on the uh, causative factor for the patient to be in the critical care unit. Now, routes of administration of anxiolytic and sedative drugs, parenteral, intravenous, intramuscular, enteral, oral, rectal, hepatic, first part, the nasal, sublingual, these are the same repetition. Now, that finishes your uh, sedation and paralysis in ICU, it is your choice, but looking at the parent condition of the patient, you have to choose. You have got a lot, lot of groups of the drugs also.